Good morning. Sunday morning. Oh, hey. Hey, ho. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Good Morning Sunday Morning. It's me, your old friend Danny from Body Politic Media. Today is November 1st, 2020, and we are two whole days away from Election Day. So, um, you know, you've probably noticed that I'm not a huge fan of covering the horse race or, uh, you know, commenting on the day-to-day -day of the election, but it's two days away. It's kind of an important election, so I wanted to go over a few things uh, this morning. So, uh, first, with with Trump and Biden, uh, you know, I think you guys know just as much as me, it's really hard to tell exactly what's going to happen on Tuesday. If this was normal life or, uh, you know, the old days of 2012, um, if you just look at the polling data, this election is kind of... You know, it's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, Joe Biden, as you see right here, has a eight or nine point lead nationally uh, compared to the past. That's huge. Um, he has uh, solid uh, leads in Wisconsin, in Michigan, in Pennsylvania, a lead in Florida. Uh, you know, things are looking good for Joe Biden. Um, but you just don't know What's going to happen? You have uh, you have the Trump campaign um, talking about trying to uh, not count votes after Election Day. Uh, so that might cause problems in places like Pennsylvania or even Minnesota. So uh, I just don't know what's going to happen. And <laughs> I don't want to uh, I don't want to comment on it too much. Um, it seems like Joe Biden should win, but. Who knows? Uh, instead, I want to focus uh, on the election for the United States Senate. Um, I did a video a few weeks ago uh, laying out all of the races, uh, you know, the uh, close races or the toss ups. So I'm much more interested to see, um, take a final look at the polls of all of these different uh, close races and uh, try to gauge um what kind of chances the Democrats have to take over the Senate next year. So, uh, as you might know, currently the U S Senate is controlled by the Republican party and they have a 53 to 47 seat majority at this point. So the Democrats would have to pick up, uh, four seats in order to take a clear 51, 49, uh, majority next year. So, um, there's like 35 seats that are, uh, or 35 Senate elections, uh, this year. Some of those are, uh, safe Democrat seats that are going to stay safe. And some of those are safe Republican seats, which are going to stay Republican seats. But, uh, there's a handful of races in the middle, uh, which could go either way. So let's take a look at, these are the races that I think that the Democrats, if I had to predict, I would say that the Democrats are going to pick up, um, are going to pick up seats. So first we can look at Arizona. We have uh, former astronaut Mark Kelly. He's running against uh, Martha McSally. Uh, Kelly has had a, a solid lead in the polls um, and it hasn't really uh, gone away. So I'm thinking that Mark Kelly is going to win this seat and that is going to be one pickup for the Democrats. So that would bring it to 5248. So next we have Colorado. This is uh, Corey Gardner versus John Hickenlooper. Um, Colorado is a safe, uh, blue state. So, um, and who can looper has a nice lead in the polls and he's, uh, consistently had a lead in the polls. So I think this is going to be another democratic pickup. So that would bring the Senate to 51 49, uh, in favor of the Republicans. So next we have North Carolina, North Carolina, um, usually is a blue state. It's looking pretty good this year for the Democrats. You have uh, Cunningham uh, running against Republican incumbent Tom Tillis. Uh, Cunningham has had a good lead in the polls. Um, this one uh, 
you know, is more of a toss up for me, but I'm going to go ahead and put this one in the democratic category. Um, so I'm going to predict a democratic pickup in North Carolina, and that would bring it to a tie at 50, 50. So next, and this is something that people aren't really talking about much, but there is a Senate election in Alabama. And right now, the seat is held by Democrat Doug Jones. You might remember him. He won a special election a few years ago in Alabama. It was kind of a shock Democratic victory. I mean, it's Alabama. So, uh, but you remember, you might remember he ran against Judge Roy Moore, who um, was accused of uh, being a pedophile. <laughs> um, so Doug Jones barely won that special election a couple years ago. So it was kind of a freak uh accident that the Democrats won a Senate seat in Alabama. So Doug Jones is up for re-election this year. And he's running against a former football coach, Tommy Tuberville. And um Doug Jones is gonna lose. I'm looking at the polls and uh Tommy Tuberville, I think that's how you say his name, um he's like way up in the polls. So the Democrats are gonna lose this seat. So that's uh you can put that one in the Republican column. And that would make it uh, back to a 51-49 Republican majority. So now we have a handful of elections that are in the middle that are quote-unquote toss-ups. Let's take a look at the first one. We got Iowa. We have Republican incumbent Joni Ernst, and uh, she's running against the Democrat Greenfield. Uh, Greenfield has uh, had, you know, a few point lead in the polls over the last few weeks or last few months, but... Iowa seems to be uh, closing um, for the Republicans. Uh, Trump has taken a lead there in the polls. So even though Greenfield has a lead over Joni Ernst, I'm going to go ahead and put this one in the Republican category. I think Joni Ernst is going to hold on. Uh, I could be wrong, but when I'm looking at these things, I like to... Um, if something's close, I like to give the... Um, I like to give the edge to whoever the incumbent is and then also look at which way the state is going uh, on a national level, you know, with Trump and Biden. So I think the Republicans are going to hold in Iowa, but I could be wrong. So then we can move on to another toss up. This is in Maine. You have longtime Republican incumbent Senator Susan Collins, and she's running against Sarah Gideon. So Maine is usually a blue state on the national level, uh, but Susan Collins has they keep reelecting Susan Collins, the Republican. I guess she's considered a moderate, but that doesn't really mean anything anymore. So if you look at the polls, Sarah Gideon has a couple point lead for the most part, but I'm going to, it's too close for me uh, to make a prediction that the Democrats are going to pick up this seat. So I'm going to go ahead and say that Susan Collins is going to hold her seat here. So as you can see up there, we're still at a 51 49 Republican majority. Uh, next is here in my home state of Montana. We have Steve Bullock versus Steve Daines. I've talked about this election a lot just because I live here now. Uh, this is the epic Steve on Steve battle. Hot Steve on Steve action. Um, if you look at the polls, they're basically tied right now. But again, Steve Daines, the Republican, is the incumbent. I think Trump is going to win this state. Montana is a red state. Uh, just by looking at the numbers and you know, the small time that I've spent here, I've noticed. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead, even though Bullock could win this seat, I'm going to have to say that Steve Daines is going to hold it. So we're still at 51-49 Republican. Next is in South Carolina. This has been a race that a lot of people are looking at. We got Jamie Harrison, the Democrat, challenging good old Republican incumbent, Lindsey Graham. Um, again, the polls are tied, uh, you know, which is very encouraging uh, for Jamie Harrison. But um, South Carolina is a Republican state. It's going to go for Trump. Um, and I have to think that Lindsey Graham is going to barely hold on to his seat. I could be wrong, of course. I know Jamie Harrison has a lot of uh, momentum on his side down there. But if I had to guess, I would say that Lindsey's going to hold on barely. So as you can see, we're still at 51-49 Republican. And finally, we can take a look at... Uh, well, we got two more. At, uh, let's take a look at Kentucky real fast. Uh, Mitch McConnell is running against Amy McGrath. McConnell's uh, up in the polls. Um, if the Democrats would have nominated Charles Booker, I think they would have had a better chance of taking down Mitch, but they nominated Amy McGrath instead, and she's a uh, self-described uh, Trump Democrat. So she's going to lose. 
Mitch McConnell's going to hold on. <sighs> Fucking Mitch McConnell. So uh, finally, I want to look at Georgia. Georgia's interesting because in the national polls, uh, Biden has like, I think is tied with Trump in Georgia. Um, I can't recall right now. He might even have a little bit of a lead. So that's encouraging. I still think that Trump's going to win Georgia, um, but it's interesting that it's close. But on the Senate level, there's actually two seats that are up uh, for grabs right now. First, you have Republican incumbent Tom Tillis, and he is running against um, John Ossoff. Um, is it Tillis? Yeah. No, sorry. Uh, in Georgia, the Senator Republican incumbent is David Perdue, and he is running against uh, John Ossoff. This election is basically tied. Um, it could go either way, but again, I have to give the edge to the incumbent. It's Georgia, you know. It's hard to tell, but I'm going to say that Purdue is going to hold on to that seat, but I could be wrong again. But the other race is actually more interesting. It's a special election, so there's a bunch of people um, running for the other race. Right now, the seat is held by uh, Kelly Loeffler, who's terrible. Um, you might know her because she is caught up in a insider trading scandal um, right when the pandemic hit. So she is, she's never been elected. She was appointed to this seat. So she's trying to win her seat outright for herself. And it's like, there's like 20 candidates running uh, for this special election. Um, and right now there's two Republicans. So there's Kelly Loeffler and another Republican whose name escapes me right now. Um, and they're running against, there's one Democrat, um, uh, a guy named Raphael Warnick. He's a reverend, um, and he's actually leading in the polls there. But since it's like a three, four way race, uh, to actually win the seat outright, you have to win 50% of the vote. And Warnick is like hovering in like the high thirties. He's hit 40, but, um, I don't think he's going to win the seat outright in two days. Um, there's also a, another Democrat in the race who's playing spoiler right now. It's a uh, Joe Lieberman's son who's pulling at like nine, 10%. So a lot of people are calling for Lieberman to drop out of the race so that Warnick uh, could have a real chance of winning 50% on Tuesday, but that ain't happening. So what's likely to happen in this other Georgia uh, Senate race is that nobody's going to get 50% of the vote and it's going to go to a special election, which I think is in January of next year. So at that point, what's likely is that Kelly Loeffler, the incumbent, will run one-on-one -on -one against uh, Reverend Warnick. And at that point, it's going to be like a special election. Um, turnout's going to be way down. Uh, so I don't think that the Democrats, if I had to guess, I don't think they're going to be able to win that seat. Um, if it goes again to the special election in January, uh, with low turnout, especially if Biden does win the presidency, usually you see sort of like a backlash, uh, against whatever party just won. So, so Georgia, I don't know. It's tough to tell what's going to happen there, but as of right now, with all of the elections that I can say definitively what's going to happen, um, the Republicans still have a 51-49 majority. So, again, I could be wrong. Uh, there's like three or four races there in the middle that could go either way in the Iowa race, the main race. Um, but I don't know, man. I think if I had to say what's going to be likely, I would say that... Uh, that uh, it might be a split down the middle Senate. It might be 50-50 which I don't think we've had in a while. So if Biden and Harris win the presidential election, that means that whenever, whenever you have a 50-50 split in the Senate, uh, whoever the vice president is, that's one of their only jobs uh, is to break a tie in the Senate. So, um, you know, uh, that would be, you know, a positive for the Democrats, but it's just hard to tell. So if I had to make my big prediction, Two days before the election, I would say that the Senate is going to be split 50-50. Which is going to be a lot of fun for the coming years. Um, so, that's what's going on with the Senate. Um, 
I guess that's kind of all I want to talk about today. Uh, I'm also, me and Casey are rushing to paint the outside of our house here in Montana uh, before it gets cold again. So I'm going to go ahead and cut uh, this episode short uh, so that I can go outside and help uh, Casey paint the house. Um, so that's it. Election in two days. I'm going to be doing coverage all day. Um, I'm excited for this thing to be over, guys. Uh, so that's it. Stay safe. Love everybody. Goodbye from Montana.